God the Holy Spirit. God has blessed us. I'm not going to be long this morning. If you would please stand. Turn to Luke to second chapter. Luke, Luke to second chapter. God has blessed us. Once in every blue moon, I can't remember the last time Christmas came on a Sunday. That's the true, that's, that's a test of your true Christianship, if you want, for the lack of a better word. For well, many really celebrated Christmas last night at 12 o'clock. Y'all don't hear me? They opened up gifts and did their whole thing. And before they know it, this day will be gone. But God has a word still prevalent for this day and time. And, 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 and if you're there, would, would you please acknowledge that by saying amen? amen. Or wait a minute. Okay. For we are still reading about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beginning with verse 8, and we'll work from 8 through 14. And there were in the, in the country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards man. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, amen. Reverend Wright needs your amen, amen. And, your and your prayer. He's going to preach about. Don't be afraid of the guilt. God gives. Don't be afraid of the guilt that God gives. Don't be afraid of the guilt that God gives. And 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 God has been good to us. Giving honor to everybody that is due, our leadership. My wife, Liz, and Jonathan, they, they have been celebrating Christmas, and, and we all count it a blessing to be here and to be available here on Christmas. You know how when we hear the beautiful songs and uh, with Holy Night, Little Town of Bethlehem, Silent Night, and all the modern technology that is able to put it on your screen directly for you, DVDs, TVDs. They came to us through Hollywood, sharing with us the great story of our Lord, great entrance into the world. For he was king of kings. He was Lord of Lord. He was mighty God. He was stepped down from an eternity or time and wrapped himself up in flesh that he acquired from the dressing room of Mary's womb. And tabernacle amongst men that would cause even the angels to celebrate in the presence of God. Because this gift God had given to us, the world was, is now standing in awe. That gift he has given to Jesus Christ and the gift is expressly Eternal life. Right. 
That's the bottom line. The gift that God gives is eternal life. And without his coming into the world, without him taking on human form and being a kinsman to me, he could not redeem me. From all the ill and the plight of the human evil, he came as a kinsman and redeemer. When Jesus showed up, deliverance is about to happen. But we, but but now let's 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 be careful as we celebrate his entrance. For we see all the glitter and the lights and the mangers and the beautiful scene along the roads and, and and around our homes and stuff. Because the first Christmas, y'all know, was not as beautiful as this. The first Christmas, as the one we see it today, the first Christmas was not. Filled with pageantry and the splendor and the wonder and all the fine food, the ham and the churches and all that good stuff that, that comes along with Christmas. All the wrapping paper that is engulfing our living room right now. Well, from nine times out of ten, we just told them the gifts and left them there, then we met Sister Clement. And said, we'll clean this up when we get back. The first Christmas was filled wasn't filled with all the joy and the praise we feel right now. Particularly in the life of some people who directly was affected. Especially with joy. We have joy and retrospect as we look back. Retrospect. As we look back how all the things that, that unfolded, we have joy. And we see that God's plan, Brother Samuel, was better than yours. I am glad God did it his way. I'm, I'm glad some way, somewhere along the line, I found God's plan. I want to warn you, my brother, when God gives you a gift, it doesn't always invoke joy, splendor, and praise. It often comes with confusion, mayhem, chaos, and you wonder in your own mind, is this gift from God or from an enemy trying to destroy your very life? Now, 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 you would think that Joseph would be filled with joy and, and glee for his life. But God had chosen the woman that Joseph chose. God had set aside even as Joseph had. Because God had chosen her that should have eased Joseph's mind about all this that's taking place. That she was a virtuous woman. But when we see Joseph as he, as he leaps onto the scene, we, 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 we don't see him all exuberant. The gift of joy. We see Joseph worried and upset. How can I get out of this? If I had a back door. Well, you know that he, he thought to put her away privately. So so Joseph, and, and I got just a little money to, to go over there and let this lawyer do this for me. And nobody don't know anything about it. Joseph was upset. Because, see, Joseph didn't know when God gives a gift, it often worries you before it blesses you. God's gifts often worries you before it blesses you. Frankly, when we see Joseph, he don't leave on the scene quietly. He's trying to get out of this. When God gives our gift, or when God gives you a gift, it is our tendency to run away from it than to run to it. The matter of this gift is, is, is to try to run away from it. You know Jonah tried to run away from the gift that God was trying to use him from. All, all the old, they was trying to, Moses didn't want to go to Egypt. He was trying to run away from it before he embraced it. After all, who knows what's in a wrapped gift until we unwrap it. 
Brother Hines, I bet you didn't know what Sister Bobby Hines had you. Because it was already wrapped up. He said, I'm going to surprise Alfred this morning with this gift. Perhaps it's not so much that the gift that I wanted to warn you about, or, per, or perhaps it was just the wrapping paper that it comes in. Because God's greatest gifts are often wrapped in problems, anxiety, worry, and chaos. God's greatest gift came from came comes in camouflage situation that seems to uh, an insurmountable task. God's greatest gifts come wrapped up in prime from a job. Y'all don't see it right now. If y'all look back on it in retrospect, when you got fired from the job, you thought the world was coming to an end. Y'all don't hear me. God is trying to bless you. God's greatest gift is coming in a package of the person that you thought you couldn't live without. And he walks away from you. Best thing that ever happened in your life. In fact, God can give you a gift and you're not even feel gifted at all. People are not happy for you. They don't come to worship the gift, they come to kill the gift. Or destroy the gift. We didn't come to commemorate something that happened 2,000 years ago. For God is still in 2016 in the healing making business. God still have things under control. Ask, uh, ask Brother B. You can drive from the East Coast all the way back here to Texas and an airplane don't crash. Y'all don't hear me. Because we think we take everything for granted. It wasn't even assured that we would make it here today. But God smiled on you with the gift of life and he breathed into you this morning.